I want to call Mr. Blackie back up because there were some a few allegations made that I found interesting. <clears throat> um, and I'm hoping he can answer some of those questions. Um, we heard uh, that it would violate the Supreme Court decision on the Inter-Tribal Council. Could you speak to that, sir? Yeah, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, so uh, this bill carefully stays within the framework that was established by Inter-Tribal Council. We agree that, that Scalia said, uh, as the NVRA does, that states must accept and use the federal form and that we can't require information beyond that which is required uh, by the Election Assistance Commission. And so to, to that point, um, first, as to our state form, Scalia affirmed that, quote, states retain the flexibility to design and use their own registration forms. We have the authority to reject state voter registration forms as this bill would require. As it relates to the federal form, again, there are three outcomes. The first is that we find evidence of citizenship, and then that person is registered as a full ballot voter. The second outcome is that we find that they're not a U.S. citizen, and so we reject that. And Scalia <coughs> affirmed our authority to do this, quote, the NVRA does not preclude states from denying registration based on information in their possession, establishing the applicant's ineligibility. And that's exactly what this would do. We would find evidence they're not a citizen uh, and then reject the application. And then the third outcome is if we can't find the individual in a database at all, in which case they get registered as a federal only voter, just as uh, intertribal council required. Um, so this is completely within the constraints of that, uh, that Supreme Court decision. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any more yeah, questions. Yeah, so uh, follow up to that. Has this been struck down, anything like this been struck down in other states? Uh, no, this uh, Mr. Chair, this framework hasn't been tried in other states, um, and uh, I, I didn't hear uh, any of the uh, other testimony mention this, but other states have done stuff that arguably would uh, violate uh, intertribal council, like blatantly rejecting applications that don't have proof of citizenship, and this bill doesn't do that. Okay, and what about the, um, what about the claim that this will require everyone to re-register or millions to re-register, I guess. Can you address that, please? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and, and that's something we started seeing in the last couple of weeks is kind of a lot of misinformation about what this bill does, specifically as it pertains to putting proof of citizenship in the qualifications to vote. What's missed in the context of that is that we refer to uh, Section 16166 in its entirety, and subsection G of 166 is that notwithstanding subsection F of this section, any person who is registered in this state on the effective date of this amendment to this section is deemed to have provided satisfactory evidence of citizenship and shall not be required to resubmit evidence of citizenship unless the person is changing voter registration from one county to another. And so this bill keeps that intact by referring to the entire section 16166. Very good. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Blackie? Um, uh, Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Black, um, what, why is place of birth a requirement on, on this form for, for voter registration? Uh, Mr. Blackie. Mr. Chair, Senator Contreras, um, place of birth is useful in identifying in some of these databases. Um, uh, having their name, date of birth, and place of birth is how you can sometimes get a better match of who the individual is, which will help us find proof of citizenship for somebody who didn't provide it when they applied. Any um, question? I, I just, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Blackie, I just, I just don't see how, I mean, when, you, uh, when you're here in this country and you have your ID or whatever as you're, as you're requiring here, why you should want to know that, that my dad, although he's a citizen of the United States, was born in Caborca, Sonora, Mexico. Uh, what does that have to do with anything when he's a citizen of the United States and has been working here and, and has lived in this country since he was 12 years old? What does it have to do where he was born? Mr. Blackie. Mr. Chair, Senator Contreras, um, most states, and I, I, I believe our current form actually already requests um, uh, the, the, the place of birth of the individual. This is now requiring it in 16.121, which is the minimum requirements um, for what must be on the form. Uh, but back to that point, it does help in identifying. So if the individual does not provide, uh, if they were a naturalized citizen but didn't provide their uh, registry or their naturalization number, um, knowing that they were born in another country leads the counties to then go check the save database for that individual so that we can obtain that proof of citizenship on their behalf. Um, if they say they were born in the U.S., then we can go check vital events to try and find a birth certificate for them, uh, which is one of the database checks that this bill outlines. Any further questions? Mr. Brelli, did you have a question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Blackie, uh, to that point, 
Is, is that the same type of question the census asked for? Mr. Blackie? Mr. Chair, Senator Borelli, to my knowledge, I, I would think so. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't see anybody else signed in to speak. Thank you for your testimony. Thank Thanks you. for answering those questions. Madam Vice Chair, please move the bill. I move House Bill 2492 with a due pass recommendation. You've heard that motion, members. Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Bartow? Aye. Senator Burley? Pass. Senator Contreras? Pass. Senator Leach? Aye. Senator Quezada? Pass. Senator Small Hamilton? Pass. Senator Rogers? Aye. Senator Burley? Mr. Chairman, I explain my vote. Please do. Mr. Chairman, you know, accuracy, I'm glad uh, Ms. Morrison actually agrees that accuracy counts. And when we're, we're registering the votes, accuracies, particularly in elections, need to be accurate. The election, uh, Federal Election Commission actually demands that there's a chain of custody documentation on all the ballots. Maricopa County came up with a form that they actually use for chain of custody, particularly on the drop boxes, and I have them here. And I, and I examined some of them. They came through a FOIA request. And, and it, when you examined a lot of these things, they didn't, a lot of them, there was 19 of them, didn't even follow the proper procedures on the form. It's supposed to be two people that transport, something, two people they have to sign off. Then when it gets to the county, somebody has to accept the, the contents and inventory. The inventory is very, supposed to be verified by two people, and somebody's supposed to sign off on it. I've got 59 pages where there's <coughs> no quantity whatsoever and no signature on some of these. So even when you take an average of 59, uh, the average of 439 ballots, which was with the documentation, <clears throat> I'd look at an average. And if you just put that number in there and times that by 59, you come up with 25,904 ballots. So accuracy is more important than anything else when it comes to registration on voting or the census or or anything, any kind of data, because if you got bad data, you're going to get a bad output. We come up with laws and rules and regulations to keep honest people honest. You know, all you got to do is stick to the plan. Um, I do not want somebody coming here from a foreign country, particularly, you know, heck, Italy, for that matter, and just coming in registering on a president-only vote ballot, and they're not even a U.S. citizen. Because what that does, it nullifies the legal resident. Now, also to the point about the Native American uh, tribal land, if those rural areas, particularly off the reservation, people in rural areas, they can register to vote using their P.O. box on, on the, uh, in Cells, Arizona. Uh, a lot of uh, Native Americans register to vote at the community center. So that's their, their point. So where they had a lot of, when we did a, a, a investigation down there in Pima County uh, on, on check and voter registration, and there was a lot of people registered to vote at the community center, and that's quite all right. So, you know, I don't see the big burden here. I mean, we want to make sure that uh, a legal citizen uh, has a right to vote and does not negate the uh, an illegal vote, does not negate a legal vote. And that's what it is. So that's about voter protection. It's not about um, undermining the vote. And as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm really confusing why the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union, doesn't support this because it protects the rights of the legal citizen. That I vote on. 